Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. Uh, I had a customer slash friend the other day make a comment about watching or reading something where someone said that you don't need to sharpen your planes beyond 300 grit in order for them to perform well. I take issue with that, so I thought, well, you know what, let's just actually try it. So I've got a piece of, of um, hard maple, eastern maple, sugar maple, rock maple, everybody has a different name for it, but it's hard. And I think it represents one of the more, I wouldn't call it difficult to plane, but it certainly is one of the harder domestic woods in North America. And I've got two planes, four and a half and a five and a half. This is the four and a half. Everything is the same in them, except for the length of the sole. I'm going to go through, I'm going to take one blade out, and I'm going to prepare it to a thousand grit, both the back and the bevel. And I'm going to take the other one, I'm going to do it to 16,000 grit. Now we'll just show bits and pieces of it so that we don't take a whole lot of time. But I'll meet you over at the sharpening station and we'll go through the process and then we'll give them a test and see what happens. Yeah. Okay, I'm using IBC blades in both. These are 140 thousandths of an inch thick. The bevel, the primary bevel is about the same. In fact, if you put them side by side like this, it's almost identical. But that really doesn't even matter except for the fact that if you made the angle too acute, you wouldn't have enough metal out here. But on a bevel down plane, when the blade is situated like that on the frog, any angle you put underneath here does not change the cutting angle that you encounter when you actually use the plane. So as long as you don't exceed the bedding angle, which would be 45, and you don't want to get much below 25, or you just wouldn't have enough metal. So I'm going to take this one, and I'm going to walk through the process again of preparing it, but I'm only going to go to 1,000 grit. I'm using a Trend 1,000 grit diamond stone, and I'm using some Honrite in here to lubricate it. And uh, the reason I use hone right is it prevents it from rusting the metal stone. And I use, of course, the Charlesworth ruler trick. And if you're not using this, you're, you're, uh, I think you're behind in, uh, in sharpening because this Charlesworth ruler trick it makes so much sense, reduces your time dramatically, and there are no downsides to it. So uh, do some research on it, and you can really improve your sharpening. So this little steel rule, and this one I'm using actually is 25 thousandths of an inch thick. Um, yeah, that's right, 25 thousandths, 0 0.025. I'll hold it in place with my index finger on my left hand, and then I'm going to stay within a quarter of an inch of the opposite edge. And I will, I want to get rid of any of the scratches, or I want to, pardon me, I want to replace the nice shiny polish with 1,000 grit scratches. Now I'll shut the camera down just because I'm going to spend about a minute and a half. We don't need to film all that. We'll pick it up just as I finish and then we'll switch to doing the bevel. Okay, I've been at this for a little over a minute. I've stayed within a quarter of an inch of the edge and that's just so I don't alter the angle. It puts a little less than a one degree back bevel on there, but if you move in too close and you're going to alter that angle. So I stay out there within a quarter of an inch. So as I flip this over, I no longer have a uh, shiny strip that I once had, so I would assume that all of those scratches along there are commensurate with a thousand grit stone. Now we'll do the bevel, and here we employ micro bevels, and I still don't understand why there are people that will take the time to polish all of that. It makes absolutely no sense. This is the only part that touches the wood. Polishing down here does nothing but waste time and material. So we employ um, this is not the normal procedure because we'd actually go one beyond this, but what I'm going to do is set the blade down on that primary bevel, raise it up a few degrees, and I'll spend, oh, 10 to 15 seconds creating or working, because it was already on there, that secondary bevel. And I know I'm done when I can detect a slight burr on the back side of the blade that runs corner to corner. Okay, so the bevel's all the way. I'll turn, flip this over and wipe the moisture off it and I shouldn't see any excessively shiny spots and I don't. I wanna get rid of the burr, so I'll go back to the 1000 with the steel rule and just spend a couple of seconds getting rid of that. Okay, wipe the moisture off. All right. I'm just going to write on there 1K. 
Now we're going to go ahead and do the uh, other blade. I'm going to start it. Actually, the first thing I need to do is come over here and prepare my 16,000 grit Shapton stone. This is a ceramic stone. This is the uh, lapping plate that you use to keep it flat. And it only takes a few seconds of work to do that. I try to do it every time before I sharpen. Just getting rid of the slurry that's in there so it doesn't clog the lapping plate. Now we'll come over here. I'm just going to wipe this junk off. Set the steel rule on there. Oh, actually, what am I doing? I don't need that right now. We've already done this. All I need to do over here is actually put my secondary bevel. So I'm going to reference off of the primary. Raise up three or four degrees. Spend about 10 seconds. And I'm done when I can detect a burr on the back side that runs corner to corner. Okay, and the burr goes all the way. Now I've already done that back. That's already been prepared. So what I'm going to do is come over here and repeat the process, except this time Instead of raising up three or four degrees, I'm going to go a little bit higher than that so that the only part touching the stone is the very leading edge. And I'll spend 10 seconds on this stone. At the end of the 10 seconds, I put a little bit of extra downward pressure on one corner for three seconds and then switch to the opposite corner for three seconds. That provides a little feathering effect so you don't end up with plane tracks. Now the back has already had a 1000 grit back bevel applied. I then polished it over here and typically I never touch the back of this blade with anything but my final stone which is a 16,000. So having created a burr, I'll flip it over, staying within a quarter of an inch of the edge, spend three or four seconds polishing off any burr. Actually you can see the burr right there. Okay, now I'll wipe that moisture off. Then what we'll do is we'll put one in each plane. We'll plane that piece of maple and then try the feel test. And that's feel, F-E-E-L, not field. Maybe a little bit of both. All right, I'll see you in a second when we get these all ready to go. Okay, this is really straight grain lumber, so no reason to think that position of the chip breaker is going to do anything. And I've got that about a 32nd of an inch back. That's the 16,000 grit. I wrote the 1K on the wrong side because you're not going to be able to see it when I put the chip breaker on. So one's marked, one isn't, but you know which one it is. Put the chip breaker in approximately the same position. Okay. Not that it matters, but I'll Start off with the 1K, and I'll put it in this 5.5, the lever cap on. That's a little bit too much pressure. I'll back that off a little bit. Sight down the sole. Advance the blade until I can see it protruding out of the throat. And then I'm going to retract it so that it's not uh, sticking out farther than I anticipate. Okay, now I'll put this, just trying to read the grain, it looks like going that way. Actually, there's where you get fooled. It's actually going this way. What I meant by that is sometimes what appears is not the way it is. You can usually tell better by just running your hand over it. Put a little bit of wax in the sole to reduce the friction. Now i got to get rid of the uh, marks from the thickness planer first. Did that on both sides. The blade is... Uh, the board is almost as wide as the plane blade. So I'm keeping it straight on. I'm not skewing it. And I want to go until I get a full wood shaving. Okay. Now I'm going to turn this over. I'll better mark this. 1K. 
flip that over. Take the 16K, putting it in a four and a half. Put the lever cap on. The yeah, tension is just about right. I like to have it tight enough that it won't allow the blade to move accidentally, but yet you can still make adjustments. Get the blade parallel to the sole. Then I will retract it. A little bit of wax to reduce friction. Move this out of the way so I can bump it. I flipped it in for end so that I this would obviously be the correct way to plane. Advance the blade until it picks up a shaving. Go until I can get a full width shaving. Okay, so that was full width, which means the surface is done. Now, you do the test like this. Unless you don't have feeling in your fingers, you can definitely tell the difference between the two sides. We'll let the cameraman try. Run your fingers along to which one is smoother. My thumb. This is the 16,000 grit side. Mm. Now, will it perform? Well, yeah, it'll shape the wood, but if you want to be able to finish without having to sand, and particularly if you want to deal with figured wood, you're going to have to take your blades up higher than 1,000 grit. And the difference, if you're experiencing this, it's huge. And when I look at the reflection, one surface is dull, I see marks in the wood. You're, not, you're going to be able to pick this up on the camera. And on the other side, I don't. Now, how much time difference is there? 10 seconds. That's all I do when I, after I'm done 1,000, I go right to the 16, I apply 10, 000, or 10 seconds worth of work to elevate the surface quality. In my book, it is definitely worth it. So do it, check for yourself, see what you think. See ya.